Acute fatty liver of pregnancy is a rare disease with an incidence of approximately 1 in 10,000 pregnancies. High, more, high maternal and fetal mortality rates of as high as 75% have been reported in the past. Most cases occur in the third trimester of pregnancy with an increased risk among nulliparous women and multiple gestations. Recurrence with subsequent pregnancies uh, can occur but are extremely rare. The etiology of acute fatty liver has not been fully determined, but the deficiency of a fatty acid enzyme, long chain 3, hydroxyacyl, coenzyme A dehydrogenase, uh, has been found in a significant proportion of neonates of mothers who were diagnosed with acute fatty liver. Clinical findings. Often the patient presents with nausea and vomiting. She also may uh, demonstrate right upper quadrant or epigastric pain. And most all will, will complain of lethargy. In addition, jaundice, pruritus, and fever may often occur. Commonly elevated blood pressure and proteinuria are present, confusing the diagnosis of acute fatty liver with preeclampsia. Do realize that anyone in the third trimester of pregnancy with nausea and vomiting and right upper quadrant pain uh, should have in their differential diagnosis acute fatty liver. Laboratory findings. Suspicion of acute fatty liver demand certain laboratory results to confirm the correct diagnosis. Complete blood count should be obtained and this often shows an increase in the white blood cell count and also thrombocytopenia. A complete metabolic panel should also be obtained and this may show increased levels of plasma creatinine uric acid, the BUN, and probably most important, elevated liver transaminases. Two other laboratory findings are quite uh, revealing, and this is an increase in the ammonia level and hypoglycemia. This is usually well less than 60 milligrams per deciliter. Almost all women will demonstrate laboratory studies indicative of a coagulopathy. Low fibrinogen, elevated activated partial thromboplastin time, and prolonged prothrombin time are often found. Elevated lipase may cause pancreatitis and liver dysfunction may result in transient diabetes and syphilis. Ultrasound and MRI have been utilized in an attempt to diagnose acute fatty liver. Uh, studies have had mixed results. Both methods, though, have shown fairly high false negative results, and at least at this point in time are not thought to be that helpful in the diagnosis. Liver biopsy has been suggested, suggestive as the gold standard for diagnosing of acute fatty liver with the findings of fatty infiltration of the hepatocytes with nuclear sparing and absence of necrosis and inflammation. Rarely, if ever, should biopsy of the liver be undertaken secondary to the bleeding potential from the coagulopathy. Now we should turn to management. The management of acute fatty liver includes first and foremost delivery of the fetus and placenta. No patient has ever recovered antepartum 
but most will show improvement in their clinical laboratory findings two to three days uh, after delivery. The cesarean section should not be considered mandatory, but the maternal and fetal conditions evaluated in the appropriate uh, mode of delivery entertained. If the fetus shows signs of deterioration on the fetal monitor, cesarean section should be undertaken. Likewise, if the labor is not progressing well or the mother's condition is deteriorating, prudent cesarean section uh, may well be in order. The anesthetic agent of choice should be compatible with the disease of acute fatty liver. No uh, general anesthetic uh, which causes hepatotoxicity should be utilized. If conduction anesthesia is chosen, certainly correction of the coagulopathy with appropriate blood components is necessary before placing the epidural. Prior to labor induction or cesarean section, the patient and fetus must be monitored carefully. Intravenous glucose containing fluids should be instituted uh, to correct the hypoglycemia. Protein intake should be restricted and neomycin considered to reduce the ammonia level. Most important is correction of the coagulopathy with fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, and packed red cells. Prophylactic H2 blocking agents may also be used, which will reduce the chance of gastrointestinal bleeding. Rarely extreme measures such as hemodialysis, plasmapheresis, or liver transplantation uh, have been used uh, when other modes of therapy have failed. In conclusion, acute fatty liver is a life-threatening condition demanding a correct diagnosis, stabilization of the patient, and timely delivery to improve outcome for mother and fetus.